Welcome, everyone. Um, so uh, the schedule's a little bit different. You might have been expecting um, Brenda's let's put Wi-Fi and everything talk, but unfortunately she's sick. Um, so thankfully we've got um, Graham here and he will be talking, uh, giving his talk, hear no evil, see no evil, patch no evil. Um, please save your questions to the end. We'll have 10 minutes for questions then. So please give a warm welcome to Graham. Thank you. Um, so as you hear, Brenda is sick and I, um, my, one of my colleagues at work knew I was coming to this conference and I was chatting to him earlier and he, he pointed out how the president of New Zealand had recently said something about the problem of New Zealanders being too lazy and bringing in foreign cheap unskilled workers. Well, I'm the cheap foreign unskilled worker that's been brought in at the last minute to, to fill this slot for you. Okay. And really good idea to plug these things in when you need them. So I'm going to start off with decorators. It talks about monkey patching. We'll start with decorators. Uh, you should all know what they are. It's that little at symbol at the front there, which they stole from the um, email addresses. Uh, if you've used decorators, you have to say decorators are useful. Yes, no? Yes. yes. They're easy to implement? <laughs> yeah. Um, so typical decorator. Uh, it looks simple. It's, you can write them using a, a nested function or a function closure, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we just create that internal function there, and we're going to use it with our bit of magic decorator syntax and we apply that. That's a, a typical pattern for, for implementing a decorator. But for those who said no, this breaks introspection. That means that if I try and get the name attribute or the doc string from that function, that will no longer work. Okay? Um, but you might say, but doesn't func tools wrap else help fix that problem? Now the idea is we've gone and used this func tool model, we're going to put an actual decorator Inside on our nested function and then use that. So yes, it solves the problem of name and doc, but it doesn't solve all the problems. Okay? There are still issues with introspection related to things like getting um, the signature of the function and, and various other things. It doesn't work, uh, that general thing of using a function closure when you're doing wrapping a decorator on another decorator where that inner decorator is implemented using a descriptor. And there's a whole bunch of other things as well where that sort of use of a nested closure, the typical way they do things, it doesn't really work. Now, a few years ago in Auckland, who, who was in Auckland um, PyCon a few years ago? Did you go to my talk then? <coughs> One person did. I'm very sorry, okay? Um, <laughs> I killed various people's brains that um, I try not to make my talk so intense and full on uh, nowadays, but I did in that one. I went into the whole details of of why decorators are done wrong. And yeah, I had people come up to me later, um, months later and said, yes, I very much enjoyed your talk, but I had to watch the video six times to actually understand it. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that again today. Um, there are lots and lots of compl de complicated details about why that basic pattern for a decorator doesn't work. If you go to my blog, off on the right-hand side, there's a quick link set quick links section and there's a little thing there for decorators and monkey patching. You'll find of a series of about uh, a 10 or so or a dozen blog posts there which go into that whole problem of why that decorator pattern doesn't work and also talks about some more in depth in some of the, dec the monkey patching stuff I'm going to talk about today. So please try not to implement decorators yourself. But what is the solution? The solution is this module I've written called Wrapped. Uh, now, you may have used one in the past called decorator module. Don't use that one. Use, it, use wrapped, okay? Uh, it's sort of taken all that, that lessons learned from what was wrong with that one and, and done it correctly and, and sort of hides all the details from you so you don't have to worry about it. So basic decorator in wrapped, uh, you're going to define your, your function, which is going to be your function wrapper, and you're going to put wrapped.decorator on it as a decorator. Uh, and we've got a few magic arguments here, which is uh, the thing that was wrapped, an instance, which I'll mention in a minute, and args and keyword args. And you can do what you want with that. You can change the arguments as they go in, or change the result as it comes back out, substitute things, uh, put timing things around that, or put print things. You can do whatever you like in there, just like you would normal decorator. It's just we're going to use wrapped. And wrapped to worry about all the details of getting it right for you. The instant point, and this is where what wrapped does is actually very, very interesting. Uh, if you're familiar with using decorators, you might have come across the problem of 
write, having to write one decorator which you can use on a normal function versus writing a decorator that works on a method of a class. A method of a class has a self argument. So it's actually quite hard to, in some cases, to write a decorator which you need to apply in both cases. Because, well, how do I know that I'm being called as my wrapper function and I'm applied to a method of a class? How do I know there's that magic self argument in there? And wrap takes care of that because it gives you this instance argument. And if you are called on a normal function, if your decorator is applied to a normal function, instance will be none. If you're called on a method of a class, then that instance argument will be the instance of the class. If it is decorator was applied to a class method, that instance argument will be a type object and it will be the type of the class that it was applied to, the, the me class method was on. Uh, and finally, um, is that all we run out of options? So function, oh yeah, st static method or function, Oh, and a class that's top on is the class itself. You can apply decorator to a class itself, and you'll get you'll get that. What will you get in that case? Uh, decorator is a class. This instance, I've marked something up there, but you can de you can t determine the, two dif the difference. Oh yeah, the wrapped the wrapped is a class, and that that is a type in that case. So you can actually work these things out. And it's what's called a universal decorator, uh, and you can make those calculations of, of when things are applied to, and that becomes really useful in certain things. And one of those things is is in wrapped. As a bit of a bonus, it's mainly there as a, um, a sort of an illustration of what you can do. I've got this this implementation of a decorator for doing uh, mutex locking synchronization. Now, if you're familiar with Java, they have an actual synchronized keyword, uh, which you can just essentially whack on a, a function, and it will do all that locking for you. This synchronized decorator I've got here works in very very simple way. Similar way, so I can apply it to a, a function, it'll lock apply a lock to that function. I apply it to a different function, well that function's got a separate lock. But if I can also apply this to a method of a class, and this is where I can use the fact that um, in wrapped you can know that it's a, a method and I can do something special. So if the synchronized decorator was applied to an instance method, then I can lock that instance of the class. Now if you've come across these synchronized decorators in the past, often the problem in here in that context is that they're only are still applying it to that one function or you have to provide an argument somehow of what you're going to lock and all sorts of weird stuff. Uh, we can apply it to a class method, in that case it'll lock the class, uh, or we can apply it to a, a static method, in which case again it's locking on the function. Uh, and one of the cute things I've done with um, this particular decorator is it's, it's not just a decorator, it's actually a context manager as well. So We've got our synchronized decorator on function I am went up there, but at the same time, and that's locking on the instance of the class. But same down further on, if I don't, if I need more fine-grained locking than the function as a whole, the method as a whole, I can within there go with synchronized self, and that will lock on the instance just for that bit of block of code. Uh, and similarly down the bottom, if I want to lock on the whole class uh, because I want to block out something that's happening in a in a class method, uh, then I can do synchronized on object on the type of the class. So it's a bonus thing and that shows you the, the power of what, um, well, you won't be able to see it because there's a lot of magic happening underneath in the implementation of that, but th this would not have been possible with a standard decorator pattern. But I can do this with wrapped. Um, now, so, do you want to trust me when I say that wraps, you should use wrapped? Well, I've had many, not many, but a few, uh, core developers of CPython come up to me and say, can you please work on getting this in the, standard Py in the Python standard library? So if they're saying that, believe me, it must be awesome. So if you do do decorators, have a look at wrapped. But wrapped, the primary purpose of wrapped wasn't actually for writing decorators. Most people know it of it for that, if you have heard of it. But the primary reason for it was for doing monkey patching. And this is because I used to work at a company called Neurelic, which did performance monitoring. And who's, who uses Neurelic? Who's heard it? Used it? Jeez, I don't know why you guys want to use it. Um, if, you, if, you understood, if you understood the horrible stuff I'm doing underneath with monkey patching into code, which you're running in production, <laughs> it works. But oh my gosh. You just obviously people trust me. <laughs> um, they'll do the right thing. I don't work there now, but anyway. Um, so decorators rely on similar principles to monkey patching. And, and that's why, even though this library wasn't designed for decorators, 
uh, what, all these problems you have to solve for monkey patching are relevant to that problem of decorator. Because when you monkey patch, you need to have all those things, similar things to things. You need introspection to still work. You need uh, all those things. Uh, you don't want to break dec uh, descriptors that you may be wrapping in that. Because as soon as you do something like that and break the code, I'll break your production code. And you don't want that. And that's why wrapped has to do this very, very well. Uh, so, now, what's the difference between decorator and monkey patching? Uh, who's here's used Python 2.3 or earlier? A few. So, back in 2.3 and earlier, there was not the concept of decorator syntax. That at there didn't exist. In Python 2.3, you had to do this down the bottom here. Function equals function wrapper function. So instead of applying at function wrapper, you actually had to do this explicit call to apply that wrapper. That could have been a global scope or, or even in the body of the definition of your class, you're going to do that. Right? So you're actually making an execution call while the definition's been read in to apply it. Uh, now, that down the bottom is what we would more commonly refer to as monkey patching because it's, it's like more obvious, right? It's not the special decoration syntax. But the difference is decorators are applied when the code is defined. So that at thing was a part of when it was being read in. The, the Python language interpreter actually worries about it for you. You'll notice with that functional call, we did it after the function had been defined. So that's, the, that's sort of a slight difference. So monkey perfection is performed after the fact, and essentially we can't use that decorator syntax. But why would you monkey patch in the first place? Now, I mentioned performance monitoring, which is what New Relic's doing, which is the one down the bottom there. But you may need to do it if you're using a third-party package, say Django, and this man here is lazy and they're taking a long time to put a fix in Django and get it released. But you need that fix straight away and you don't want to carry the burden of running your own fork of Django code for a while. But you need this fix. So one way you can do that is use monkey patching to apply your fix in place into the code. So import normal Django, apply, apply monkey patch and you're good to go. And then you can wait for them a few months later to get a new version of Django. Is that right? <laughs> Um, the other one where you can use uh, monkey patching is testing. Who here uh, uses mock or whatever it's called in Python 3? I can't remember what it's called now. Um, it's actually a version of it in Python 3, 4 onwards or something. So mock is a thing where if you want to do testing of your code uh, and imagine your application does an actual call out to a back-end web service, but you want to test the bit of code that does that. That web service may not exist when you're doing testing, or you can't have it do that. So what you can do is use monkey patching to stub out a bit of code. So rather than actually go and do a call out, you'll just return some dummy data. And that's enough to, to then satisfy your test. And you can compartmentalize everything. And so test a little bit of your code and not really be doing end-to-end -end testing where you're having to involve all services. So that's another useful use for it. So monkey patching with wrapped. How would you do it? Um, so what do we have here? We have our example class, uh, and we want to apply a wrapper around this name name method in here. So we're going to define our wrapper. I'm just going to pass it through the argument, uh, pass through the result. We can import our example, and we're going to say we're going to wrap function on class example with that name, and we're going to apply a wrapper. And that's all you need to do. Uh, and you think, well, but I've done this in the past. Why can't I do that? Please don't do that. Okay, that sort of direct uh, patching of methods breaks in certain corner cases. And this is, again, gets back to decorators things. It's, it's wrapped as designed to worry about all these things that you probably don't know. And okay, 90% of the time you're not going to encounter them, but when you do and things don't work, you're going to go, what the hell's going on? And in this case, wrapped worries about it for you. Um, if you want to know what the corner case, you can ask me later. Um, now, that particular example, we, we imported our class a module for the thing we want to patch and we applied that patch using that wrap, fun wrap function wrapper. Um, we can start to make that a bit simpler again. Um, there's more decorators in wrapped. So we can essentially just in this case we don't even going to we're not even going to import that module we want to patch. We're just going to say patch function wrapper on this module, that class with that method name. And it'll go and apply it for you. Eh, nice simpler. Uh, so what about testing where we do not want to apply permanent patches? So those ones go and apply a permanent patch, as if we want to fix Django, because he's messed it up. Uh, but if we want to do testing, so for example, like Mock does, where we actually only want a patch applied 
when we're running a particular test, we won't apply this patch, run the test, and then take it out again. Because otherwise, if we leave it in there, then it might mark up our next test, and so on. So we want to apply patches in a certain context. So there's a, there's a decorator in there for that as well, wrapped transient function wrapper, uh, very similar to the patch one. But the difference is um, that it's not actually applying the patch at that particular point in time when it encounters this. What's going to happen is that that creates an actual new decorator, and we're going to put that decorator then on our test method. So when we call our test method now, it's going to go, oh, valid storage lookup decorator is going to get called, which is going to go apply our patch. When it exits, it's going to remove the patch. And that's how we get our transient decorator. Um, Wrap does even more than that, though. Um, if you've used mock, you'll know that, yes, you can patch a particular function, but the other thing you can do is you can mock out objects. Uh, Wrap has ways of doing that as well, and there's a, there's a thing in there called a tr a, what I call a transparent object proxy. So this class called object, class called object proxy. So you can apply this to another Python object, and anything you do on that wrapper will be applied to the thing that was wrapped, the inner one. Uh, what that means is that if there's only one particular method of, say, we're wrapping an instance of a class, and we only want to intercept one method call, we could do that. We could just do this one, do what we need to do, and just call the original. Anything else you do on that will just get passed through transparently, and you don't have to worry about it. Um, so in this case, now test, uh, yeah, we're just going to create our storage. Of, this time we're going to put a wrap around it, um, and then we'll call it. So th this one, look up here, we'll go through this one up here, and the clear will just go through the original. Uh, so there's all sorts of magic in there for doing that sort of stuff as well. Now, all well and good, and but does it solve all the problems? Now, uh, one of the problems you come with doing monkey patching is uh, this one here. Uh, if you import a module using this syntax here, from example import function. Um, anyone see where I'm going yet? I've got a couple of nods, yep. So if you just go import example, and, and that's all you do, and then go reference example dot function, the original version of that function function bad name, I got tripped like this last one, so I'm going to go back and change the names, uh, is this still inside of that module. So when I go and patch that function inside of that module, then I put a wrap around the original one. If someone does this, from example, import function, they've essentially created a copy of that in another module. So if I go patch the original, I've only patched the original, I haven't patched this copy. So you end up with all these sorts of problems with monkey patching, that you've got to be very careful about the order in which things are done. You need to get the monkey patching in before things like this happen. Um, the other problem is that when I had that before example of patch this function, patch function wrapper on this thing, I've had to import this module that I want to apply it to. So if I've got a huge code base where I've got a whole lot of stuff I want to patch, uh, I've imported all those modules already. But what happens if my end application doesn't even use 90% of them? I've still dragged in all those extra modules into memory and it's going to consume memory. So what's the solution to that? So a while back, someone proposed PEP 369. It was never accepted. So it's not been implemented. Don't go looking for it as part of the language. But one of the things that defined in there was this concept whereby you could specify that when a module was imported at some point later in time, that you could do something. So wrapped provides implementation of that. So in the example here, I can say, Wrapped when imported example, and that's my deco and there's my wrapper there. And as, as long as I get this in first, then later on, whenever example is imp imported, if it if it is, it'll call, it will apply that wrapper at that point in time, uh, or it'll apply my function. It'll call my function, then my function will then apply the wrapper. Um, so it's better, but it still does require that bit of code there I had there, the patches to be in done very, very first, first thing in your application code file. And we're still modifying something. We're still going to modify your application code, which is not, not great, is it? So we need a trigger, way to trigger monkey patches without actually modifying any of your application code. OK? <laughs> and you, you may want to do this. For example, if you're using Goonicorn, for example, and Goonicorn's broken. Well, Goonicorn, you run on the command line. You're just going to run Goonicorn, blah. How do you patch that? You don't want to go 
having your own version of Unicorn. Uh, so how can we solve that? And that's why I have a companion package for RAP called AutoRapt. So we can install AutoRapt. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to bundle up our patch actually in a module itself and install that module. Now, um, if you've ever written modules yourself, one of the things you, you create is a setup.py file. You create a setup.py which eventually declares what your module is, what the bits are in it, and all those sorts of things. And then you're going to do Python setup.py, uh, what, sdist, for example. It gives you a tarball. You can then install. Uh, so we're going to build a module. We're going to put our patch inside of that. Now, one of the things important here is that this bit here, entry points. Uh, when you use setup tools rather than dist utils, it has this concept of, of entry points. Uh, and it's just a way of tagging information on a module, really. Uh, which you can look up later. Um, and what I've declared is I've declared this entry point called wrapped whiskey ref debugging. And in that is essentially just a list. Uh, and it just says whiskey ref simple server. And here's a function. So I declared my, my I'm going to declare a module called wrap whiskey ref debugging. And in that side, that's going to be a function called apply patches. And whiskey ref simple server is, is, I'm referencing in this case, a module that's in the standard library. And I'll get to why in a sec. So my code module then is, there's my apply patches function down the bottom. And this is the actual wrapper that I'm going to put around it. So the idea here is I want this apply patches to be called when this target module is imported. It's going to call that. It's going to apply my wrapper to put a timing function on there so I can time that. How am I going to get that to actually work though? I've got a module. I've got an example bit of code which is going to use WSGIREF, for example. How do I get the two together? And this is where order wrap comes in. Now. This is going to scare some people who know about this stuff, I'm sure. All I'm going to do is set an environment variable. <laughs> and that environment variable, all it's going to have is wrapped whiskey ref debugging, which is the name of my entry point. And I'm going to run my Python app. And that's it. And <laughs> there is my debugging that my wrapper did. I have not modified that code, yet it worked. Um, this is scary. Uh, <laughs> this fan of me knows where I'm going. Um, I, it, was, it was probably very unwise, and I think um, people probably regretted doing it after the fact. There's this really, really weird and dangerous feature in, in uh, Python. Uh, when um, you install a um, package, in site packages, uh, depending on how it's installed, there's this, this thing called .pth files. Have you ever gone into site packages directory and you've seen these .pth files? Uh, the main use that people will know about them is as essentially an, an alias or a symlink type thing where it says that it, what it allows you to do is if I install Goonicorn, for example, and I've got version 19 or 20 or whatever it is, it'll put Goonicorn-20.0 or whatever as a directory name in site packages. And then it'll have a Goonicorn.pth file which actually then just has a name in it which is the name of the version directory. Uh, so it's a funny little th thing like that. It's just, it means you can create, ha install things with under version names. But there's a weird behavior in it. If the very, if the line, start of the file, start of the line in a .pth file starts with import space, it will take that line and execute it <laughs> when Python is starting up, okay, before anything else. It was originally done to do, to allow people to add in new codecs for char sets or I, I don't know the right terminology. It's something to do with Unicode and all sort of mess like this, where people wanted to actually uh, put extra codecs in there. Uh, so this was to allow people to do that bit of execution to register their new thing with Python. So I'm using this. Um, it's, it's a gross hack, but it works. It works really well. So the other thing about this is, yes, it works. Now, uh, you'll n I mentioned how I've created a package out of my um, patch. Now, for those who are using New Relic, you, you'll, may, you, you'll, you'll know that it was just install New Relic and it just worked and did everything. Inside of that was this huge number of different um, sub-modules in there for patching all sorts of different things. Django, Flask, Requests, and all these different things. But they all had to be in that one package. Now, from instrumentation perspective, what, what's quite cute with what I've done with um, AutoRapt is that potentially you could... If we want to say, oh, New Relic's great, we can go and write our own one, but write one module which is the core 
of the instrumentation for performance monitoring system, but all of the different instrumentation packages for different frameworks could be all separately installed packages. And you only install the one you want. And that way you wouldn't be dependent on the original author of that performance monitoring package to actually implement it. Because you could bundle one up yourself, put it up on PyPy, and people could use it. I find it really interesting for that, but I haven't got around to doing about it yet. So reasons to use Trap, create better decorators. Um, my awesome Fred synchronization decorator. Um, but also a safe mechanism for monkey patching. Uh, so that's wrapped. And I'm wrapped about it. I hope you are. <laughs> All right, questions? Yes? I'm just curious about, you had the, um, the synchronized um, decorator. Do you have an unsynchronized one as well for the, the converse situation where you have a synchronized method and you want to drop out of the, the atomic um, operation for a moment? <coughs> Why would you want to do that? <laughs> you, you might want it generally synchronized and maybe you're doing some I.O. or something, I don't know. Um, it's a, a general situation. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you just not put it on there in the first place? Because there's... Um, the whole thing is that it's a synchronized decorator which is applying it. So if you didn't need it, just don't put it on. I, I don't understand why you want to come in after the fact to try and undo it. But you're going to have at, at synchronized, at unsynchronized? It's like <laughs> or, or you mean in a, in a testing context? Oh, OK. But that, couldn't that get dangerous? Probably. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. I'm having flashbacks of async programming here. Oh. <coughs> can you put can you port Pi contracts to use wrapped, please? Can I port Pi contracts to use wrapped? Pi context. Contracts. Co Pi contract. You decorate your functions with a contract. I've never heard of it. Yeah, and it stuffs us up stuffs exactly as you said, stuffs up the call the signature. Um um, talk to me later. Um, the, it, 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 the decorator is obviously used in lots of different places, and 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 uh, yeah, even I keep putting this man. It's their fault. It's their fault. It's Django's fault. Um, Django, Joe actually has one of these things in when they have this problem where they have this decorator in there. Where one, one they have one, they you create a decorator in Django, and yes, it works on a normal function, and then you have to actually create a second version of the function using another function wrapper to turn it into an instance method one. So, <laughs> but, but, um, but also even the Python standard library, there's things like LIU cache now. And well, it's going to muck things up in the same way as well. Uh, if we ever get this in the, the Python standard library, I'm looking at all these other things inside of the Python standard library. Mm, would they let me change that to use this? <laughs> Any other questions? Um, so I, I'd have to look up the details, but I remember trying to do things that uh, write something that was both a decorator and a context manager at the same time, and that's rather painful. And I'm just wondering whether Wrapped helps you with that particular task. No. <laughs> okay. uh, you can go and look at how I did it, yeah. but it, yeah, it's really convoluted. I actually I never sat down and thought about could I actually create something to make it easier. You probably could, but I never did because I was just doing it a one-off case. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on licensing and monkey patching? Like, there are some licenses that allow you to use a module as a library, and then if you're... Are you modifying it if you monkey patch it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this this is... That's... I don't know. I don't have a simple answer. It, ju it just reminds me of the, the whole argument about um, using GPL modules even in a another Python program, in a Python program, which, and because there are some people who say that, and the general opinion seems to be, but I'm still very nervous about it, is that if you've got a GPL Python module and use it in another thing, it's not strictly linking, so it's okay, you're not poisoned everything else, but <laughs> like, licensing is a scary area, and I, 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 I don't know. So, uh, assuming you get this in the standard library, when would you rock recommend people use this as opposed to mock? <coughs> mock, uh, this provides the building blocks which I think you could use to make a better mock. 
it, it does not provide the equivalent functionality to mock. Uh, this is a much more roll your own solution. Uh, so mock tries to be this one do everything type thing. Uh, and I've used wrapped uh, for doing testing as an alternative to talk, uh, alternative to mock. But yeah, you have to, to roll things yourself effectively as you go. You're, you're customizing a, to a particular situation. You're only patching out the, the little thing you need, whereas mock just replaces the whole object. It's not wrapping it and then allowing to change one little bit. So you can't just say drop mocked and use this. It's a lot more work to, to cut over. This is a lot more. Um, Okay, I won't say it's more flexible. I'll, I'll say at least we'll ensure that the integrity of things like inspection will work. <laughs> um, because, yeah, it depends on the use case. Any more questions? No? Okay. All right. Break Thank you. Ahead. You can now, uh, what do they call when they get rid of an Im illegal immigrant out of the company? Deport me. <laughs> 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 and I'll go back to Sydney. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.